Yo, what up, Alpha Stacks fam? Welcome to Road to Recovery. I am a 20 year old that has gone from being in one of the best shapes of all people, being able to lift hundreds of pounds, to barely being able to walk. I've had many doctors give up on me, but I will not give up on myself. And this is my journey to recovery. Thank you so much, all you all, for joining me. So right now, I'm in the phase, the fourth week, and my goal right now is education because if I'm going to try to heal myself, which by the way, if you feel you have an injury, don't try to heal yourself. Um, go to a doctor. Do not try any of these things at home. So all right, so now that we got this disclaimer out of the way, since I'm trying to heal myself, I got to educate myself. I got to know what I'm talking about. So what I've been doing this past week is reading a corrective exercise textbook by NASM. And here are some of the things that I learned this week um, that will hopefully help me out on my journey to recovery and will hopefully help you out if you're dealing with any orthopedic pain or even if you're just a gym rat, you want to get stronger, prevent injuries, whatever the situation is. So here we go. Road to recovery week four. So Dr. Brookbush, famous, um, famous doctor, um, here are his four best, should say low back exercise categories. Um, one quadruped. So if you Google bird dog exercises, um, that's an example of a quadruped exercise. Great for the back. Um, you have planks as a progression to quadrupeds, more advanced. Then you have glute bridges. Most of us know what glute bridges are, or some people call them glute thrusts. Um, next thing is we have the chop pattern as an advanced progression because it's hard to teach. The chop pattern is just look up... Um, hay balers um, and wood chop exercises on Google and if, or, or how to do hay balers and wood chop exercise and they'll show you this. Um, you have to make sure you have to do this one properly. Bridges specifically I think are really great because a big cause of lower back pain is tight hip flexors um, and bridges they in so many different pathways, too many different too much to get into right now, but they really are great for loosening up the hip flexors and activating the glutes. Because if you have tight hip flexors, you're going to have weak glutes. And if you have weak glutes, now your lower back and your hamstrings are going to have to compensate, and it's going to throw off your whole mechanics, and um, that's definitely going to create lower back pain, just from having tight hip flexors. So, that, all right, back. So we got static malalignments. Next thing is, what is a static malalignment? It is... Um, altered length tension relationships or altered joint um, joint arthrokinematics. So altered length tension relationships is we have a certain amount of muscle length and certain amount of tension that should be on our muscle, on our muscles. When that is altered, when a muscle is either too tight or too loose or too weak, then that is an altered length tension relationship. Altered a joint arthrokinematic is the way joints move and slide and rub and twist and glide on each other. Now, there's a normal way that joints should be moving on top of each other. And then there's a way that's not normal, that's altered, that is not so optimal. That's one thing. Um, and it can be caused by, you know, muscle knots, hypomobility. Let's say your hypomobility is, means when you have too little mobility, the opposite of hypermobility. And it can be caught, and it can go to, it can cause, or is caused by poor posture. Um, an abnormal muscle activation pattern um, that you don't need to know. It's where you have altered force couple relationships. So um, let's say one muscle is getting too much neural drive. It's, it's too tight. It's not allowing you to, it's not contracting properly. Whatever the situation is, then it may activate in a way that is not optimal and it may throw off the way your body is moving. Then you have dynamic malalignments. There's two types. Upper extremity and, move, and lower extremity movement impairment syndrome. Lower extremity movement impairment syndrome is um, obviously in the lower body. And it is similar to, so you, to lower cross syndrome. In this movement impairment syndrome, oftentimes you'll have flat feet. The knees will cave in. Have an arch on the lower back. Um... You'll have a very predictable set of injuries that um, can be caused by, by this. So if you have flat feet or you have an arching lower back, you see your knees collapsing perhaps when you're standing, this could be indicative of 
this lower extremity movement impairment syndrome. Next up, you have upper extremity MIS. This is also known as upper cross syndrome. In this syndrome, you have a forward head, rounded shoulders, scapular winging, a rounded back, among other things. Now we have a few interesting points. The addition of two to three degrees of foot pronation led to a 20 to 30% increase in pelvic alignment while standing and 50 to 75% increase in anterior pelvic tilting during walking. Ireland et al. in a study have demonstrated that 26% less hip abduction strength and 36% um, decreased strength of the hip external rotators in subjects with patellofemoral pain, leading to an increased femoral adduction and internal rotation. So what this is saying is that if you're unable to kick your legs out sideways or um, twit externally rotate your legs on um, your knees, your legs, then you could be, then this can be a cause of knee pain if you have knee pain, or it can cause knee pain if you don't have knee pain yet. Um, several studies have demonstrated that training of the trunk musculature may increase control of, the, of hip adduction of, the, of an internal rotation during functional activities and prevent dynamic malalignments and potential injuries that arrive from this impairment, impaired movement pattern. So pretty much saying that core stability is important. If you, lack, if you have proper core stability, um, it can help you um, avoid injuries um, that are, would normally be caused by lower cross syndrome and by flat feet and by your knees collapsing in and by having an arched low back. So now we have something called the cumulative injury cycle. This, um, this is pretty much a cycle where, let's say your muscles sustain a little bit of tissue trauma. Um, what's gonna happen, um, in a bad way of course, like maybe tendonitis, I mean what's gonna happen is you're gonna have inflammation, and then muscle spasms, then muscular adhesions, and altered neuromuscular control, followed by muscle imbalance. And this is provided that you do not address um, the injury properly. So if you do not address an injury properly, pretty much you're going to go through a whole, a whole cycle where it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. So therefore, it's important to, foam rolling is important, and it's important to address injuries. Um, that's what, and next thing, we have two last points. David's law is um, soft tissue will model along, along the lines of stress. And relative flexibility is when the human movement system takes a path of least resistance. So let's say you lack shoulder flex, um, lacking um, the ability shoulder extension to lift your hands all the way overhead. But you're trying to reach overhead because you're trying to do a shoulder press, a shoulder press, or you're trying to reach something um, on the top shelf. Oftentimes, your lower back will compensate and arch to um, make up for that limited range of motion that you have in your shoulder. So with this, I hope you all have a great day. Um, Hope you learned something from this. Hope this wasn't too complex. And yeah, peace out, homies. Oh, and remember one thing. Spread some smiles out there because one smile, one time, can change a person's life. And when you improve one person's life, even if it's your own life that has improved, you improve the world. Peace out and drop a thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoy this video.